Okay, YouTube found another problem here on the inverter. There's a, I believe it's a 120 ohm, probably one watt resistor here, and you can see down there it's blown apart right there. There's a big crack, so I think this resistor has gone open circuit. Okay, that's where the resistor used to be, right down there. It actually still measures 120 ohms. It's a little bit damaged on the bottom, but I'm thinking this capacitor here might have been blown out because there's a lot of something built up around the bottom and it looks like it's coming from under there. The top looks okay. Okay, YouTube, I've pulled the resistor and capacitor out to test them out a circuit and they both look okay. 220 microfarad and 120 ohms and I think this whatever this was on the board here was maybe like a blob of adhesive that dripped on the board because it was really stuck down here. I had to scrape it off with a chisel. Underneath the capacitor was totally clean and the resistor itself other than where the material it stuck to it was fine. So I don't think the resistor is overheating. I think I found the problem down here. If you see right in here, there is an F2 fuse. And it's one of these little Pico fuses, one of these guys. And it is blown. So what I did, I pulled the old one out, cleaned out the holes, and I put two screw machine sockets so I had a couple of those and I put those in the two holes and when, once I get the new fuses in I'm going to just slip those into the sockets because I'm not sure if this blew because the capacitor shorted or was there another problem here. I, d I just don't want to go soldering a new fuse in and having it blow right away. So I figured putting those sockets in should uh, make replacing it a lot easier in the future. There's some surface mount things right behind this fuse and I'm just afraid of damaging the tracks if I have to desolder it more than a couple of times. So that's that. So this whole area here seems to be a switching power supply. This is a switching regulator. You've got an inductor and I think this is a transistor and then there's also this opto isolator so this must be some sort of feedback because this is coming in from the the ac over here through the opto isolator you can see the isolation slot cut there so this is coming back from the transformer so this is your 120 volt over here coming back here and right into this switching power supply so i'm not sure how that's all related there and then you've got this circuitry up here, and this connector here is a two-pin connection coming from the transformer. So this is like low voltage AC here, and that goes into this connector. Here's your fan. So this is the cooling fan right here. So this is an in-channel MOSFET here. This is a WL431 precision voltage reference. And then your, your microcontrollers under here. These are probably bypass caps for that. Here's your crystal, the little buzzer. You've got four quad op amps here, LM324s. This is your RS485 data transceiver for the ribbon cable there coming from the controller panel on the cover. So that's about all that's here. Uh, these are current transformers. I guess for the incoming and outgoing AC power. So that's your two CTs. And then here's your transfer switch relays. And I think this must be some sort of a filter. So these must be the MOSFET drivers here. And then you've got your MOSFETs down here and MOSFETs up there. This is the positive side of the H bridge and then this is the negative side. And then your microcontroller and a whole bunch of discrete diodes and resistors, capacitors. 
yeah, the fuse is right in here, so it's pretty delicate circuitry there, so I figured I'd put the sockets in. And then here's all your AC stuff. You've got your isolation slots there. Here's where the opto-isolator is. There's not a whole lot of uh, components there. And to think this, this will put out a thousand watts of AC power and it'll also do 40 amps of battery charging. So that's a pretty neat little module. Okay, YouTube, got my shipment of 5 amp Pico fuses in and I've got one cut and trimmed and got the leads bent and I've got the bottom one in the socket and let's see if I can get the top one. You got to get it pre-bent so the leads line up. Okay YouTube, you got the inverter board back in the unit there and you need to hook up the transformer. Apparently there seems to be some sort of a feedback through this low voltage transformer winding. Well, so right now I don't have any load or input power hooked up. So that means this is going to come up in an inverter mode because it thinks there's a power failure. So it's going to be running the battery and driving the transformer there. And you need these hooked up because it's going to be driving the transformer. And then that sends a voltage back here these two wires in into this middle connector and I guess that's how the controller here senses the output voltage and if it sees the the output voltage is too low it assumes this thing is overloaded and it it lights up the LED on the control panel here so it lights up this uh, inverter condition it's over temperature if it's flashing and if it's on solid, it's overload. So I've got my jump start battery here. So let's turn on the power. Showing basically zero current. And let's go over here. And there we go. It's up and running. Gives me three quarter, 75% battery voltage. And there we go. It's showing about 2.4 amps. So actually that's that's pretty good. It was showing a little over 3 amps typically at no load. And I just hear a little bit of buzzing. That's probably the transformer. I don't hear the loud buzzing that I was getting before. But I think we're up and running. So job done.